Good morning. Good morning. Wake, wake up call. So I want to come back here at the end of our live stream this morning, God willing. And it's teeming rain. But actually, even if there were good sunshine, I'd want to come in here this morning because of our themes. But just so you can see how it's teeming rain, and you can believe me in case you think I'm delivering fake news. You can see here how the rain is coming down, although it's beginning to break. You can see over there that it's breaking and actually that's also the prognosis for a while and then it's going to be raining again as far as i understand so let's come inside pull so the reason i want to come in here well let's just go down here to check how it's raining over there And you can see the Sea of Galilee, so that you see that it's still here. But we won't be out there this morning. Yeah, the rain is really lightening off now. It was very heavy even just five minutes ago. light. That's strange. It's still, it is still dripping on the infinity pool, but it's just too dull in terms of light to see it. So here you have our scene over toward the Golan Heights. And there won't be any sun disk visible there, I don't think unless there's a major hole in the clouds. And so we go down to the Encounter Chapel because that's also one of the scenes. But the, the story in the, in the book of Samuel is, is very powerful. Yesterday we were talking about how Absalom Interesting that his name means probably father of peace. It's father peace. And he's rebelling against his father and has organized an army against him. And now there is a battle. And Absalom means Av is father and Shalom is peace. So Absalom means father of peace or peace father. And his father, David, King David, is so sad when he learns that his son has been killed in this uh, conflict. And the thought occurred that he's crying out for the resurrection. He wants his son reconciled. He said, I wish I had died instead of my son. And it's hard not to think of God related to us in all our rebellions against our Heavenly Father and how he wanted to lay his life down for us. This is extraordinary. And this is what he did. And that since David, in his wish and prayer, is also a figure, a premonition, uh, uh, he's helping us to touch that reality, to appreciate it. To appreciate the reality of the love of parents who want to reconcile troubled children. They're ready to make every sacrifice for them. And so that day's victory of having killed Absalom was actually a day of great mourning for the entire army. And that's so powerful. It tells us that the human life is such a treasure. Relationships are such a treasure. 
And in a way, that's what this chapel is all about. It's about relationships. It's called the Encounter Chapel. And it's modeled on our synagogue here that we excavated in Magdalene. If we have another day of rain, maybe we can go and do the sunrise stroll and chat at our synagogue. Let's see what happens tomorrow. We have a few days more rain promised. So that's a good possibility. So you can see the seating is like our synagogue, the columns and the colors. This encounter chapel, it's a place where we meet, where we meet together. So here we have this image of the woman touching Jesus' robes, and that is actually the gospel story today. And thousands and thousands and thousands of families have this in their homes. And many, many scores and scores of churches have a large replica of this picture in their churches. This was painted by now famous Daniel Cariola from Chile. It's an interesting story. Father Juan went to another artist in Chile, recommended to him a lady to do something about the hemorrhaging woman. And when she understood the potential, she said, no, you must have my master painter, the one who has taught me to paint, you must have him do it. And eventually it became this painting with just the legs, not even the legs, knee below the knees, and the hand touching the garment. It's a work of genius. And capturing that moment, he painted the tip of her finger as healed. And the rest of the hand is still sickly. He did a lot of study on the hands of 20 elderly, sick women to produce this hand for us. And by painting the tip of her finger as healed, he captures that instant of the miracle when Jesus asks the question, who touched me? And the disciples push back and say, you're crazy, everybody's pushing. Look at all the people here, so close, all tight, all wanting to get close to Jesus. And Jesus knew, <laughs> and he said, power went out for me, somebody touched me. And what Jesus is interested in is the relationship with this woman, the relationship with every person whom he heals. Jesus wants personal relationships with us, not just a chemical, biological, physical healing. He wants us to enter into relationship because there's probably a lot more to be healed. We could be physically well, but we could be in real bad trouble with a child, with a parent, with a sibling, with a neighbor. You know, that's David, he's a king. He has everything at his disposition, but his son is rebelling against him. The healing of relationships is so important. So I think we'll just do a little prayer here. Uh, I'm, I hope everybody understands. Um, so we usually do this for pilgrims, and I encourage you to think of somebody today who needs healing. It could be a cancer, it could be diabetes, it could be migraines, but it could also be relationships, it could be depression, it could be uh, unhealthy aggressiveness, unhealthy uh, relationships. We want healing, we ask the Lord for healing. So I'm just going to put out my finger as we're touching here, Jesus' robe for your finger. And you can think of somebody now for whom we pray. Jesus, we come to you this morning here at the Sea of Galilee with our sick and broken people. Jesus, we believe in you. That's why we bring them. We know who you are. Jesus, we hope in you because so many thousands came to you here 2,000 years ago with great hope of healing. We want to hope in you with a great hope. Jesus, we come to you with our 
broken person, and we can say his name now, her name. We come with great love. Love makes us patient. Patience is nothing more than pure love for people who are a big burden for us. Pure love for you, Lord, when we are going through very hard times for which we have zero understanding. Jesus, fill the heart of this broken person with your love so that this person can become a hero of patience until they're fully healed. Jesus, we believe in you. Jesus, we hope in you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we adore you. Now, as it turns out, this particular story is sandwiched by another story. And I don't know if you notice here, a second talit. Jesus is presented here wearing a talit, this Jewish cloth, overcloth. And you see on the right of the picture, another talit. And maybe that is the talit of Jairus. In fact, when I suggested this to Daniel Cariola, he said, oh, that's a great idea. He hadn't thought about it. And Jairus is the head of the synagogue in the gospel story. We're in Mark chapter 5. We're in uh, Luke chapter 8, I think. We're in Matthew chapter 9. All three synoptics have this story. And Jairus is head of the synagogue, so he goes to Jesus and he says, come and cure my daughter, she's very sick. And Jesus wants to come, but that's when the lady touches the hem of his garment. And then Jairus gets bad news, your daughter died, it's too late. Very, very discouraged. But Jesus looks at him and said, do not be afraid, Jairus, just have faith. And then Jesus came to the home and he took Peter, James and John, represented there on the right, into the home with Jairus. And Jesus went with Jairus and his wife to the room where the girl was and the, the body, and he picked up her hand, he took her by the hand, and he said two words in Aramaic, talita kum, or sometimes talita kumi. Talita means little lamb. It could also be the name of a person. And he says, little lamb, arise. And she comes back to life. There's so many things I would take 20 minutes to tell you about this picture. I think we've done some of them at some point. But the thought that came to me this morning was Jesus calls her back from death. Again, it's so personal. He takes her by the hand. That is so personal. When you shake hands with somebody, when you give somebody a hand up on a donkey or a horse, when you give somebody a hand is to help them. It's you're lending your person to support their person in their moment of need. To give people a hand at work, at play, in friendship. And he calls her. He, he touches her hand. He calls her. He takes her by the hand. He says, come back. Come to life. Get up, Talita. Little lamb, arise. And the mother in all her weeping and crying, is filled with shock. She is back to life. And Jairus is pondering, who is this who can raise them from the dead? I went hoping he could heal my daughter, but she died, and now he brought her back from death. Jesus' relationships with us, God's relationships with us, reach beyond death. 
come back to life. And what we usually do here is a little prayer if you have a daughter or your little sister or your wife or your mom, your grandma, your cousin, your neighbor, classmate, workmate. Jesus, thank you for holding my daughter's hand, my granddaughter's hand, my neighbor's hand. Jesus, fill her with life. Like one day you filled Talita, this little girl, the daughter of Jairus and his wife, with life. And when her greatest day comes, Jesus, fill her with the fullness of everlasting life with all the angels and saints in glory forever. So the good people, this is our little sunrise stroll and chat this morning. So may the sun rise in your life. Jesus wants us to come back from conditions of death, of dying, of fading as people. He wants us strong. He wants us filled with life, life in abundance forever. Looks like the rain has laid off, but we've done pretty well for today. So maybe we just go out so you can get the, the mount our bell as our little sign off. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Praying for you here. For healing of all relationships in the family. For the greatest relationships with, with God forever. God bless you.